The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus spoke to the people, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, because I know where I have come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is valid. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. Jesus spoke these words while he was teaching in the treasury of the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is not surprising that the Pharisees were incensed by Jesus. His claim to be the light of the world was just too much for them to take. They thought that he was conceited, perhaps even crazy. Looking at this poor, uncouth carpenter from Nazareth, it is no wonder that they pushed his claims aside as preposterous. They ask him, who testifies for you? Where is the proof of your claim? Jesus tells them he needs no proof, nor anyone to testify on his behalf. He knows where he comes from, and he knows where those who know him know where he comes from, because he comes from the Father. Therefore, it is God himself who testifies for him. How many of us are as incredulous as the Pharisees about Jesus' claim? If he is the light of the world, then why has he left us here alone in such terrible darkness? At one time or another, we all ask that question. We would like proof some kind of irrefutable testimony that demonstrates God's existence and verifies Jesus' claims. Deep in our hearts, we want to experience some miracle, some event that will help us believe. What would happen if God did demonstrate his existence in some dramatic and irrefutable way? Suppose, let's say, God were to rearrange the stars in the Milky Way to read I am the light of the world, with suns and planets to dot the I's and comets to cross the T's. How would we respond? I suspect some of us would fall to our knees and pray. Some would probably run and hide in terror. People around the world would be thinking, if only I had known, I would have lived my life differently. For some, there would be wild joy because here at last is irrefutable proof of a reality beyond us. The first impact of this great miracle would be extraordinary. Churches would be filled to capacity. Wars would stop. Crime would disappear. But as this great testimony to the light of Christ continues to shine for all to see, as we get more and more used to it, how long will it be before some scientist proposes a theory that says it's just a freak occurrence. Worse yet, how long will it be before someone reads that message, I am the light of the world, written in the stars of heaven, and says, so what? What difference does it make? We all want proof, like the Pharisees. We all want to be certain. But witnesses are scientific proof, the kind we think will silence our doubts, does not exist. And I believe that we know more about Jesus and the light he sheds in our lives than we think we do. That light shines and guides us through our own personal darkness more often than we realize. Who knows in what way or in what unlikely moment he will come to us. 
Knowing that he is there, but not knowing how we will encounter him is what makes every day a holy mystery. Each of us carries around some kind of deep emptiness, a sense that something is missing, an incompleteness. Psychologists sometimes refer to it as anxiety. I believe that this unease, this anxiety, is itself a word from God. It is the sound that God makes in a world that has explained him away. And it is through his absence, through our missing him, that we really, truly come to know him. The light of Christ that brings to bear on the darkness of our own lives is the real miracle, the real proof. In all the anxious moments of our lives, Jesus repeats to us the words of this gospel. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. They are not the kind of proof written in the stars but they can produce miracles. These words require the eyes of faith to see. Faith in Christ and in the Father who sent him will help us to open ourselves up to his presence and make us more willing to wait, to watch, and to listen for the incredible presence of God here in this world among us. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God to help us to be open to the, his presence in our lives. That our church will continue to witness to the presence of Christ in this world and inspire courage and faith in God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ will make us instruments of peace and hope so that we may love others as he has loved us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those in our television community, especially those whose intentions we are praying for in this Mass, may receive the light of Christ to strengthen them in their trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are dying or near to death may be guided through the darkness by the light of Christ and find the reward in God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, help us to trust in your plan for creation and to open our lives to the light of your love. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 